Hi, this is The Business Guy, and today we're going to talk about how to start a bank. And we're going to discuss the five steps you need to follow, so be sure to watch until the end to get all the important steps. Now let's cover two things right up front. Number one, when making this video, I watched all the other YouTube videos on the subject, and they were all missing the most important thing. Of the ones that I watched, nobody had actually started a bank. So this is the only one that I've seen anyway, presented by somebody who's actually started a bank. I started a bank in 2006, owned and ran the bank. My bank took on depositors, did loans, etc. So watch this entire video because you'll be learning from personal experience. Number two, then I see videos talking about being your own bank called infinite banking using cash value life insurance. I mean, even the IRS calls it a ripoff, as you'll see in a bit. Everybody in the financial industry, except for people who work for insurance companies and those who have drunk the Kool-Aid, think they're an absolute joke. And I'm going to tell you exactly why at the end, and you'll really want to see this part so you don't get pulled into this game. So this is about how to actually start a bank, a real bank that you see when you're driving down the street or look online. And if you appreciate this straightforward information presented by somebody with experience, please click the like button below so YouTube promotes it. And you can also click the subscribe button and notification bell below if you haven't already so that when more videos come out like this one, you'll be up to date right away. Now here's the good news. Though it's expensive to start a bank, the startup cost does not need to be your money. You can raise the money after you form your corporation. So none of the cost to start the bank needs to come out of your own pocket. More about this in a bit. If you look at the Small Business Administration statistics, 100 businesses start, and after five years, 80% of them are out of business. 96% are out of business after 10 years. But with banks, 97% of them are still in business after 10 years. Why? The banking business is one of the most profitable in the world. You have depositors on one hand depositing money into your institution, and then on the other hand, you charge bank fees and you can lend out certain portions of that money to earn interest. And here's some examples. We did a lot of property development loans to builders, and these are short-term loans where you can charge a lot higher interest rates. So this was an undeveloped lot at first. So as the development progressed, we did loan draws until it was complete. Here's another house in the country. We did a loan on this house from the ground up. And here's a loan we did to build this house in the city. Now this next one is a big, beautiful home on the lake. This was just dirt on the lake before we started. Now in this one, we foreclosed on this property, finished the construction, and sold the house. Now there are many more loans that we did, but on this one, the builder stopped paying the loan. We stressed out about this one. Look at this big, beautiful house. So we hired a foreclosure company to foreclose on the loan and take possession of the property. And this beautiful house in Washington State, so you can see Mount Rainier in the background, we finished the construction and sold it, and made, as I recall, $200,000 on it. So here's how we did it. We paid about 3% interest on the savings accounts at the time. And then we charged 12% interest on the construction loans. Remember, you can charge a lot more for construction loans than you would for a conventional mortgage. So let's say we have $10 million in construction loans. That's 12% of 10 million. That's $1.2 million. And then there's $300,000 in interest expense that we paid to the depositors. That's $900,000 in interest plus the $200,000 we made on the foreclosure. So that's $1.1 million in gross profit. See how that works? Now this doesn't even include the monthly fees, charges on the deposit accounts and the loan origination fees. Then the excess cash that wasn't loaned out is deposited in bank-to-bank -bank loans and government bonds for another, say, $350,000 a year. But it gets better than that. With fractional reserve banking, if you have $10 million in deposits, the U.S. government lets you borrow money from the Fed and loan out, let's say, $100 million. So let's multiply the loan profits by 10. So instead of $1.2 million, that's $12 million dollars in gross profits, plus $200,000 on the sale of the foreclosure property that we just showed you, plus about $350,000 in fees, minus depositor interest expense of $300,000, and then minus government interest expense of $900,000 because the Fed is lending you money for a total gross profit of $11,350,000. Now, you getting this? Now, these are rough figures, and you're not always going to be able to charge 12% interest. But if you had half the spread between the interest you're charging and the interest you're taking in, but you loan out twice as much money, you have the same return. So the bottom line is, you're making money on lending out other people's money. The important thing is to make sure that the actions that you take are safe and comply 
with the law. So really get this, in the banking business, if you have a choice between two investments, one with high return and high risk, and one with low to medium return and low risk, you choose the low risk option. Now the world's richest investor, Warren Buffett, owns a large percentage of Wells Fargo Bank. And he says the reason most people lose money is they wanna earn money quickly. And he says the one thing is, I don't know how to do it. Everybody wants to earn money quickly, but I'm satisfied earning it slowly. And if one of the world's wealthiest men say that, for somebody who seeks to be wealthy, the principle of earning money slowly, safely, and steadily is something that we can all take to heart, especially in the banking business. Okay, so what do you do to start a bank? The first step is to choose your jurisdiction. Now to form a US bank, you need about 15 to $30 million in capital to get started. Now that's not an expense, that is your cushion that you need to deposit so that you have something to fall back on during the ebbs and flows of profitability. In many other countries, however, you need only 500,000 or a million. Again, and that's for money that you raise from others if you need it, not necessarily out of your own pocket. Now, some of the recommended jurisdictions in which to form a bank as of this recording is the country of Dominica, where a bank needs $1 million of capitalization. Now, here's me and the prime minister of Dominica when I met him in his office talking about starting a new bank in his country. In St. Vincent, you only need $500,000 of capitalization as of the current regulations for a class B bank, and a class A banking license generally means that you can serve any viable client, including local citizens of that country. A class B bank license mean that you can accept clients worldwide except from within that jurisdiction. So as of this moment in time, we like St. Vincent Class B banks and Dominique Class B banks as a place to start a new bank. Step two is to form a corporation in the jurisdiction where you want to start the bank. Form a corporation. First, we form a corporation without the word bank in the name, and then we get a banking license, and then we amend the name to include the word bank. And you can call us to form the corporation for you right now, but we also help provide an address in the region for your company to comply with the initial requirements. So to be clear, we form companies only, but my staff is not trained on forming banks, so you have to contact an attorney who does this for you. We can only form the company, but you would not want to call us and ask us a bunch of questions about starting a bank because we set up the company and an attorney that you'll find, we won't find them for you, will take it from there. Now on this note, keep in mind, if you're not willing to invest a few thousand dollars to form a corporation and obtain a physical address, it's going to be very difficult to find people who want to invest hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars with you to start your bank. So before calling us, at least be prepared to form your corporation because that is the minimum first step. So for the rest of the process, you need to get a lawyer who can get the banking license for the corporation that we've established for you. Step number three is to complete the banking application and provide you due diligence. The banking industry deals with other people's money, so it is very highly regulated. You'll need to be transparent and provide full documented proof of your identity. The regulators will run a full background check on you to make sure that you have a clean track record. And it is also recommended that you have people on your board of directors who have banking experience. Now the cost for the license fee and the legal fees are gonna be over $100,000 Again, this does not have to come out of your pocket, but out of the pockets of your investors. Step four is an optional step. If you already have sufficient capital, you will provide proof of funds by proving that you have liquid, that is liquid capital, that you have access to immediately. If it is not immediately liquid on the day that you apply or soon thereafter, it doesn't count. If not, you'll need to raise capital from investors. Investors will pool their money together to provide you with sufficient cushion to acquire your banking license. Step five is that you find a location to start your bank along with local personnel to help you operate it. Usually you need at least two or more local employees to meet the regulations. Again, the attorneys may help you find your location as well as your initial employees. Now we often get the question, will you help us find investors? And the answer is after we set up the company for you, you will hire an attorney attorney who can point you in the right direction to the pool of investors. It's not what we do, it's what the attorneys do. So that's how to start a legal, legitimate, bona fide bank. Now back to the infinite banking, life insurance, be your own bank scam. This is where an insurance salesman sells you a life insurance policy and then tells you a lie that using the cash value portion is like owning your own bank. In the IRS language, 
They call the interest they pay you, and I quote the IRS verbatim, a refund of a deliberate overcharge. So they charge you too much, and then they give you part of that money back to you, and they call it tax-free interest. Of course it's tax-free. It's just giving your own money back to you that you overpaid to them in the first place. So please don't fall for that. Cash value life insurance is the biggest rip off in America unless you're the life insurance salesman or unless you got sucked into the life insurance company's line of ball. I mean, you watch some video where some guy only talks about the good and leaves out the obvious bad, and then they talk in this giddy, excited tone, they may be able to convince people that don't dig too deeply. But if you back up and take a helicopter look at the whole thing, you'll see it gives the worst returns and it forces you to borrow your own money and then pay the insurance company interest for borrowing your own money. And then when you die, the cash value dies with you. It goes to the insurance company, not to your heirs. It's extremely expensive compared to term life insurance and it's packed with fees during your lifetime. Besides, it's not telling you the truth. It's buying a life insurance policy and calling it becoming your own bank. So please don't be brainwashed by some silver tongued devil who's trying to get their hands into your pocket and fast talk you into this nonsense. So write your comments below and tell me what you think and help me fight off the insurance company salesman who I'm sure will be spreading all kinds of nonsense in the comment section. So back to the real world. Now, if I don't answer this question, I'm going to get bombarded with questions in the comment section. What happened to your bank? Well, I started the bank in the summer of 2006. When I started the bank, money was coming out of everybody's ears. Real estate was booming. Banks were handing out loans like candy and people were lined up around the block to buy a property. You know what happened a year and a half later? As you know, the global financial crisis. When 2008 hit, when you put a house up for sale on the market, instead of getting lined of people, you just hear crickets. From 2008 to 2012, a whopping 465 U.S. banks failed. Now, this was a foreign bank that did loans on U.S. real estate. So when you do super safe loans at 30 to 70 percent loan to value like we did, you're usually snug as a bug in a rug. But when the homes dropped 50 percent or more in value, and the land dropped 80 to 90 percent in value, and we're doing loans on construction deals, and nobody was building homes anymore, and they weren't selling. And after we did loans on all this real estate, the builders walked away from the properties in droves, leaving the tiny lender holding the bag. We had to foreclose and sell the homes in a market where homes weren't selling. So this was an extreme situation, and this bank went the way of the 465 U.S. banks. Now, if we had a long runway to get up and running in normal economic circumstances, it would be up and running today. But if a baby gazelle was born in front of a pack of lions, it's going to have a pretty short lifespan. And that's what happened, and that's the truth. Otherwise, as we said, 97% of banks are still in business after 10 years. So it's usually very, very profitable. And if you're ready to take the key step to form your corporation that you will turn into a bank, give us a call. If you want to ask a bunch of questions about starting a bank, call an attorney. That's step number two. We only handle step number one, forming corporations. Give us a call. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. See you next time. This is The Business Guy.